Alrighty, well, good evening, everybody. Well, um, once again, working on my uh, Final Fantasy XIV blog post, and like I usually do, I'm at a part in the, I'm at the, I'm at a part in the writing where it's gonna be a lot easier for me to just make a video about it and talk about it rather than have to type down all these walls of text and stuff and try to explain to people how how this uh, new old build that I started playing uh, during today's stream works. So. Yeah, and then, like usual, uh, I'm going to have some music going in the background. This is going to be uh, Space Shepherds, Losing Time, Finding Space. Uh, brand spanking new album just came out today. So, so yeah, let me go ahead and get that fired up. Okay, so let me get in the game here real fast. So, yeah, today's stream, um, originally... I actually made a video about these two builds yesterday. Uh, poop Sprinkler was uh, one, and then Ferocious Poop, the other one. Um, there's no uh, no hero on this one. Well, eventually I ended up um, abandoning these two because they just, they're so tedious to use. And as silly as it might sound, my, uh, my left pointer finger was starting to get sore because of uh, having to constantly press down on L1. On my on my PlayStation controller, just constantly hitting that just to just to hit a uh, Chalcedonian's uh, ability. So. Then uh, eventually I, I switched over to another one I did a video about some odd uh, some time ago. But yeah, I switched over to this one, and then I went ahead and started playing this this old uh, this old team. I think uh, DJ Screw put this together for me, like, right around the time that I had started playing this game. I'd probably say, like, a year ago, if I was to venture a guess. Well, well, I decided to go ahead and just, because, uh, just having some bad luck, having some bad runs, having to bail from some of the battles from, uh, some of the other teams. And then, so, I just kind of, I just said, ah, oh, screw it, I'll just go ahead and throw this one on a team that I'm not a uh, I don't I don't hate it but I think there's a uh, it's basically a high risk high reward team and uh when I get into the matches I'll kind of show you how it works but um but this this team here like I said um it was put together roughly a year ago right around the time when I first started playing this game and um but again, because it's such a high-risk, high-reward team, I originally called it... I called it the pinball team because... Um, I think I, it was around this time, too, that I, I was also streaming pinball as well. And I, I was... I wasn't... I wasn't quite... I wasn't uh, quite that good at playing pinball. I still thought there was a, a lot of RNG in pinball. And then recently I came to the realization that a lot of what a lot of what kicks your ass in pinball is actually geometry and physics, not RNG. So coming to that conclusion, um, I I changed the name to Free Matches because this is pretty much what I say whenever I'm. Uh, Whenever I can't get a four match, but again, I'll explain more. I'll explain more when I. Or hell, for those of you that have, uh, for those of you, for those of you that have seen this kind of uh, team before, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So, um, I guess I can go over here. Let's let's pick a kingdom that I don't have enough uh, trade stones on. This is what I usually do when map farming. I look for uh, whatever I have the least of and go to that kingdom. Uh, let's go deep. So let's go to Kazi Hill. Okay. So, so you got all too familiar to you people, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Mountain Crusher blowing up some, uh, blowing up a bunch of brown gems. Elementalist, I believe, considered to be the best class ever. Best class in this game. And then Queen Beatrix, same thing. She 
She creates nine green and nine brown gems. Deals uh, true scatter damage, and then there's uh, and then one of the reasons why I was playing this team so much today is the uh, the 40% chance actually kicked in uh, a lot more often than just 40%. It was kicking in fairly often to get an extra turn. And then the big draw with her is uh, it cleanses everybody just by getting a four match. So you can have, as long as she isn't stunned, you can pretty much cleanse anything, anything off your whole team. Arcane, another good one. But uh, if, it's, if you're if you're just doing short, quick runs, it's not that useful. But if you're doing like difficulty 12 runs like I am, where monsters have high armor and high health, this actually helps out a lot because you're going to have a fair amount of turns in each battle enough to get the uh, magic. So, Phenoxia, kind of the same thing. You're getting magic whenever you cast a spell. And her ability is roughly the same thing. Create nine green and blue. And then deals uh, true damage to everybody, to uh, all enemies. The green and blue helps uh, power up the queen. So, and then Leprechaun. And this was probably the big, uh, the big struggle that I was having with my uh, other previous two teams, because the big drawback with those other teams that I was playing, they don't have a Leprechaun in the group. I don't. I believe this is the only troop that can do this. I think. That uh, it can blow up. Uh, it can blow the board right on the very first turn, because it also starts with full mana, and getting extra green mana is always a good plus too. So. Oh. And then before I get started, I think another reason why I'm playing this team a lot more, or playing this team a lot today, I should say, is because of my badges. I got uh, two medals of Nisha now, so plus eight magic, and then medal of a new, plus 20% starting mana. Um, cause back in the day, I don't, I don't know the exact number, but I know he wasn't blowing those 17 green gems. So he wasn't, he wasn't blowing deadly squat. In fact, you know, now that I think about it. Yeah, let me try this. Well, 13. So that might have been something else too. Why I thought there was a, uh, there was, there was so damn much RNG in this team. I had pretty much just started playing Gems of War, so my uh, attribute levels weren't really that high. I'm gonna take a drink of some water here real quick. But in case you hadn't noticed, I have a lot to talk about, about about this team. Like I said, this team was put together for me uh, right around the time that I first started playing this game, so. Okay, yeah, and then you're only exploding 27 brown gems. I think it was uh, 35 with the medals in there, so. Only 13, so the, the magic ratio must be probably like half so let's go back out here let's there we go yeah so now it's 17 and 35 so yeah and, and uh, that that's not even to mention uh how much extra damage that uh the queen of an oaks here are doing But once again, um, I'm sure this is a team that most people that play uh, that play this game, especially the ones that have been playing this game for a long time, they're, it, this team is all too familiar to you. So I'm, I often say I often forget to say this in my other videos, but I'm primarily addressing, primarily addressing uh, people that play uh, Final Fantasy XIV, or at, at the very least, check out my blogs that have probably never played this game. So. Something else I was wanting to say too. I can't remember what. Oh well. 
Yeah, and I'm, I made a change or two to my soundboard, so I'm hitting a lot of wrong buttons because you can't arrange the uh, you can't arrange the sound effects how you want them. You just you have to take what the website gives you. And then I tell you what, if only temporarily, I'm gonna knock the speed down to two. Just to give people an idea as to how the how this kind of works. So again, you're exploding uh, green gems. For those who don't know, it says on the right, it it destroys a gem, it destroys a targeted gem, which means you get full mana from that one gem. But the other eight gems around it, you're only gonna get half mana from. So that'll, and because because the queen is already up, she's gonna create nine green and nine brown gems, and then once again, I just I I just cast uh, I just cast that that run, or I just cast the leprechaun ability. So she already she already gained one magic, so she's gonna deal a little more damage. And. And remember too, this is also true damage that she's dealing. It completely ignores the armor. For those that don't know, uh, the way damage works in this game is it's taken from your armor first and then your life. But again, true damage bypasses the armor, so it goes straight to the life. And then Venoxia, same thing. She gains magic every time somebody casts a spell. And then potent nope three matches didn't get a four match out of it so and but yeah this is this this was the team where I first coined the term free matches it just I just kind of blurted it out I was probably pissed off at the time that that my opponent was gonna get all the be able to use all these matches against me so like I said I was just kind of ticked at the time free matches Hey, I got a four match. And there we go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do another, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and crank the speed back up to. Back up to the max. There we go. But uh, I might, I might talk more about it a little bit later. But this team is by no means infallible. I mean, for all of its strengths, it also has weaknesses as well. And um, if you're kind of noticing, maybe you've probably noticed this on some of the other videos if you've seen them. Um, one of my favorite things about this game is you can use both a controller. You know, you hold on L1. Yeah, you should be able to see it in the upper right corner on my team. Y, X, B, and A corresponds to the uh, PlayStation buttons. You can hold on R1, and you can look at your opponent as well. And uh, what you can do it, you can use a uh, controller and a mouse interchangeably, like what I'm doing here. So there's not a whole lot of games out there that have this kind of functionality. Best case scenario, um. If you wanted to say use a mouse and keyboard, you have to actually go into the options menu and you have to actually select it. But doing that, you can't use a controller at all now. But you, it's like one or the other, but not both. Um, Final Fantasy XIV. That's another game, but another game like this one. You can do the same thing. It's probably one of the reasons why Final Fantasy XIV is one of my favorite MMOs. 
because you can use you can use mouse, keyboard, controller, all of it interchangeably. So oh. and made pretty short work of that. And I guess we're at the boss battle. I'm gonna take another drink. Uh oh, we have freeze gems. Yeah, in the the snowflake gems that you're seeing. They're coming from this guy here, Chris Kringle. He was a, he's a troop that you can get during the Christmas season. Yeah, freeze gems. And then, I'll go ahead and explain a bit on how Frozen works in this game. Um, but uh, normally, if you can get a four match or a five match, you'll get an extra turn. But if you're Frozen, Kind of like what a she is right now. Um, you won't. You're prevented from getting extra turns. But what often doesn't. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna. Yeah, it's actually worded wrong. It's not the um. It's not the troop that's frozen. It's the color she represents. So it's it's technically green and blue that are frozen. And if anybody else on the team has green or blue, like Chris Kringle here, he's also blue, that means he's not going to get any extra turns either. Three matches. And once again, why a Queen Beatrix is one of the best troops ever? Royal Honey, because normally, with just about any other team I have, just having one person frozen can pretty much shut down this whole group. But if, if you can find a four or a five match anywhere, it's cleansed off. So it makes a lot of uh, what I would consider undoable battles doable. Hey, 40% kicked in. Got an extra turn. That same thing here. That happened twice, but like I said, this has been going on during my stream. The 40% chance to get an extra turn was hap actually happening fairly often. It's not, I mean, a lot of times, it's not always the case. But yeah, uh, quick primer on how explorers work. Uh, you pick a difficulty, then you fight uh, four explorer battles, followed by a mini boss. Defeat that mini boss and you'll get uh, what are called myth stones. How many you get depends on the difficulty you chose. Like in my case, if you look on the lower left corner, you're gonna get 71 to 75 of them. If you get 100 of them, then you can fight a mythic boss. Which is going to be this guy. And this is one of the weak. This is one of the weaknesses. Although this is kind of more of a personal preference than anything. If after using Leprechaun, if it doesn't give me enough uh, brown mana to be able to cast this immediately after, then there's a chance that I might actually just end up bailing out of the run and starting over. But as this here is a boss battle, you don't want to do that because you lose everything. Because uh, you'll automatically end the run. So... But as Queen Bee's up anyway... So... 
We can keep going. mimic fight so we'll go ahead and do this but I think after this I'm gonna do a I'm gonna show this team in a PvP which presents a whole host of other new problems and it'll expose a few more weaknesses that this team has god this is some good music I hope they all they don't copyright this stuff in the future Sometimes that's what happens with some of this music. Like, it gets so popular, they'll, they'll either, uh, for lack of a better phrase, they'll let it go to their heads and think they can, uh, they can actually get some ad revenue or can actually make money off this music. So they'll, they'll go ahead and try to copyright claim my video since it's, since their music is on my video, they want to try to make money off me or they might have actually gotten picked up by like a major record label. Um, I actually lost one of my recent albums that way. Um, Godzilla was too drunk to destroy Tokyo. They um, they got picked up by a record label. I forgot the I forget the name, but that's what happened. Once that happened, my uh, my my video got copyright claimed because they're gonna again they're gonna try to make some money off me. So ended up having to delete the video. I got lucky again. 40% kicked in. Let's just do that. There we go. for these and you saw them up here this is what you get when you complete up you complete one of these uh, explore runs now I'm doing the difficulty 12 ones they're the highest ones possible so more likely to get more of them and you're also more likely to get one of these really rare Token Anisha, as I have here, and I believe a uh, token of a new as well. So, so let's do a PvP match, and I'll I'll see if I can show you a few more weaknesses. And this is actually one of those uh one of those classes, monk. Most other uh, teams that I have, I would actually steer clear of this battle because I have no way to deal. With, uh, deal with snap freeze where again you freeze a random enemy at the start of the battle but but with this team here I can potentially bypass that so so let's give this one a try but when it comes to PvP I've said this in other uh, videos as well um, when it looks like the battle is not going to go my way I run away, so no point in trying to stick it out. These team, these teams here, are designed to kill you in, in as early as one turn. So far more powerful than what you saw in those previous battles. And yeah, this is actually one of those situations where, like I said earlier, in PB in the PVE content that I was doing. I don't have a brown match anywhere, so normally I would have just bailed out of the battle. And, or I should have said just done a do-over. But not in PvP. If I bail, it counts as a loss. So... And 
Yo, I got lucky. So, and if you can see by the uh, the the sun rays on the top troop here, she's blessed. That means she is immune to debuffs. Um, I think I told she cast her next ability. I gotta start going for the four matches. Three matches. Oh damn, luckily Frozen kicked in. matches so because my positions have been switched over here um and because of my muscle memory from you you know from using a controller so much I have to go with the mouse now and manually click them otherwise I'll add up uh, again because they're um the positions are off kilter now I have this nasty habit of casting the wrong ability because I'm used to I'm used to Queen Beatrix being where Mountain Crusher is right now. So you get the idea. So, so once again, I gotta hit these manually now. And then um, one weakness, I'll have to wait. Whoa! Holy shit! shit, shit. I should have been dead there. But yeah, if you can see by the flashing shield here, the flashing armor, she has a barrier up. That uh, nullifies all damage from one attack. So... Which... So yeah, she completely went right by her, but... Go ahead and put that back on her. This could be a while. Okay, that should do it. But yeah, that's. But that was definitely one weakness right there. Um, it's almost like what I got. No, that's a Rowan team. But yeah, uh, battles that have an elementalist as a class, I steer clear of them. Um, Archer. Oh, I'm in the, um, in PvP, you have a choice between ranked or casual. Ranked, as you probably expect, it actually count, or goes against your rating. There's a certain one I'm looking for. Kind of looking for something like a, a tide collar, um, I think frost mage maybe. Yeah, this is um. Yeah, the firebomb teams. This is where this is where I go when I'm just I'm on a losing streak and I just can't win any other match. Because all you have to do is be able to survive is be able to survive the explosions. There we go. In fact, I think I, during my stream, I actually fought this team. But I guess she decided to go casual for some reason. And 
Because there will be another situation where if, it were PV, if this were PvE, I had to re rack this whole, or I had to restart this battle, but it's PvP, so can't. And she got stunned. So, I can no longer cleanse, so any debuffs that are on me, I'm screwed. percent kicked in again gonna need it yeah I'm a bit nervous right now okay got it I got it I got it but luckily it never went off okay I think we got one here oh, that's an elementalist but let me uh the submerge the submerge buff that also shuts down my build as well. Whereas uh, submerged meaning you um you avoid damage. That uh, damage it kind of says on the right avoid all damage effects targeting the whole team, which is what I got. True scatter damage it hits all enemies. So if she got that up, it's it, the battle's pretty much a no go. But um the previous one the previous battle. I was actually trying to show that. Let me go to battle log. All right, let's try that one. That was a casual fight, that's why. Die. Yeah, casual battles won't show up on a battle log. So I guess what I'll go ahead and do So, I actually got my butt kicked by a team that had this. Grant myself all positive status effects, including Submerge. Now, normally, a lot of the buffs, they only last until you cast your next ability. But if that next ability happens to be this, you're basically keeping Submerge on you permanently. So, in a situation like that, as well as any other abilities, any other buffs, or any other uh, traits, etc., that allows, that can keep submerge on you at all times, will also shut down this build. So. Well, that's a pretty good long video. What about 30, 35 minutes? But anyway, um, that's that's gonna do it. Um, I just wanted to want to showcase that showcase this uh, new old team that I had. Um, and I'll most likely probably playing this one here more often. So, but otherwise, hey, thanks for thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate that. And I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.